what I want to share in this video is how you can prepare for the OUTS exam at home independently and on your own. Uh, there's really no need to pay or sign up for uh, intensive courses or hire a teacher or examiner when you're beginning to prepare for the OUTS exam because there are so many good resources available and lessons online as long as they come from a good source, you can really accomplish a lot on your own independently at home. And I want to just share some tips with you today on how uh, you can do uh, just that. So the first thing is so important, and this is really to understand where you are now as you begin your preparation. You know, uh, a lot of us uh, are really just in a comfort zone. We haven't even given any thought to IELTS preparation. We haven't considered uh, having to do any work towards that. And we're just going along in our daily life. We're comfortable, whether it's at university or work, we've settled into our daily routine. And then suddenly, we have an idea that we need to move forward in a new direction to go to an English speaking country and go to university or to get a job in a professional organization that has an English requirement. And suddenly we find ourselves having to step out of our comfort zone. And so often this leads us into the fear zone. It's where we enter the zone of feeling anxious or worried about what we might have to do. It may be uh, the fear of the unknown. We don't know anything about the IELTS exam. Maybe we're not sure if our English language ability is high enough, but we don't want to stay here. We want to begin to start learning about the IELTS exam. We want to start recognizing whether our English ability is high enough. And this is where we move into the learning zone. And there may be one of two things that we need to begin to work on and to learn about. The first is there's no replacing the fact that the IELTS exam is a test of our English language ability. And for the IELTS exam, you need to have a high intermediate or advanced level of English to get the score you need for something like university. So the first thing is if you discover and if you realize that you need a higher level of English, don't begin your IELTS preparation just yet. Focus on getting your English to the level that it needs to be. Spend your time in the learning zone improving your English. And then once you know and you're confident that your English is at a high enough level, then begin your IELTS preparation, learning the strategies and techniques and the tips that you need to get a good score on the IELTS exam. And stay there until you reach the place where you know that you're ready to book your exam. And this is your zone where you're feeling confident, the confidence zone. And here's one good thing about reaching this confidence zone. I often say this to so many IELTS test takers, don't book your test until you're fully prepared. And that's where you know you're not only fully confident, you're fully comfortable. So when your confidence in the IELTS exam <clears throat> has brought you back to your comfort zone, where you know you're no longer anxious or worried, where you've learned as much as you can and you're fully prepared, then it's time to book your test and to get the score you need and be successful on the IELTS exam. But it all begins with an honest estimate of where you are now, not underestimating the challenge ahead of you and moving forward confidently, competently, and even comfortably. So you want to begin, as I've mentioned, with an, a realistic assessment of your English skills. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to know any fancy academic uh, terms or topics 
or even fancy vocabulary or academic vocabulary. It just means that you have to have a good grasp on your everyday ability to communicate clearly and function in English. You know, the topics on the IELTS exam are everyday topics, things you come across every day in your daily life, the things that you watch uh, on the news or you read about in magazines or talk about with your family or friends, things like technology, but not academic technology topics, topics like social media or the internet, uh, things about the climate, uh, climate change, the weather, things about diet and nutrition, or even having a meal at a restaurant, or situations that you come across with your family and friends at school or at work. These are the things that you need to be able to communicate clearly about in English. So have a realistic assessment of your English skills. Make sure they're at that high intermediate or advanced level, and this will set you up for prep beginning to prepare for the IELTS exam. And then you begin to learn everything you can, every detail about the IELTS exam. And there's three real important resources for doing this, and that's the official sites for the IELTS exam. The first one is Cambridge. Cambridge are the creator of the test. They've designed the test, they've made the test, and they continue to, to make new tests as, as um, the IELTS program goes forward. Then we have British Council and IDP. British Council and IDP are the official organizations that administer the test. These are the ones that uh, take care and administer the test centers. So when you're booking your test, make sure that you book with only British Council or IDP. And the good thing about Cambridge and British Council and IDP is if you go to their websites, you'll find everything you need to know about the IELTS exam and you will find practice materials and practice tests to help you with your preparation because everything that they have on their websites, the practice tests, have all been used in IELTS exams. They are official IELTS exam questions. So uh, use these as your three sources for uh, uh, getting your uh, material for the IELTS exam. I've included links in the comments for the three official sites for Cambridge, British Council, and IDP. I also want to let you know that if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll find everything you need and information about every section and question type on the IELTS exam. And I am a certified trainer with British Council Canada and all the material and resources I use to teach in my videos are from these official sites. So be careful, make sure you stick to the official websites. There is so much information about IELTS on the internet and unfortunately 90% of it is garbage. I hate to say it. Uh, so you wanna make sure that the resources that you use as you prepare are reliable and come from these official, these official sites. And this will allow you to feel confident even though you're preparing independently, preparing at home and getting ready for the IELTS exam. So I've just mentioned these reliable resources, Cambridge, IDP and British Council. Don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called the IELTS Success Summit. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, I have a Facebook group that you're welcome to join called IELTS Summit Academy. This is where you can find daily tips and encouragement and weekly live webinars uh, where you can ask your questions and make your comments about anything to do with the IELTS exam. And even more importantly, you can connect with others who are also preparing for the IELTS exam. And it's a great place to find a partner to practice with, 
especially when it comes to speaking and to getting feedback on your preparation with, with IELTS. So I really encourage you, all the links are in the comments uh, to find these resources. So let me just give you some final tips for when it comes to your preparation. The first is to make a commitment. How important is the IELTS exam for you? And keep it in perspective, but understand uh, how important it is to you to get to the university of your choice in the country that you want to move to, to find the career of your dreams. The IELTS exam is a very important step. But what I want you to do is to consider writing down your goal, not just the score you want or to be successful on the IELTS exam, but where is the IELTS exam going to take you? Write down this goal and commit to it. And this will help you to stay motivated and disciplined as you continue to prepare for the IELTS exam. Put it somewhere where you can read it every day. Put it somewhere where your family members and your friends can read it too so that they can even in some way encourage you and maybe even keep you accountable for the goal that you've set for yourself. So I would encourage you right from the beginning make a commitment, write it down, and keep it where you can have it before you every day as you work towards your goal. The second thing is to be very aware of time management. Once you have an honest estimate of your English language ability and what your, uh, your preparation for IELTS and what you know about the IELTS and and how efficiently and effectively you can carry out the strategy and techniques for every question type, make sure you ask yourself these questions and give yourself honest answers. How long is it going to take me to prepare for the IELTS exam? On average, and this is the recommended time given by these official websites, if your English is at a high enough level that advanced level, that high intermediate, you should count on spending at least 12 weeks, three months preparing for the IELTS exam. Don't cut yourself short. Realize the challenge that's ahead of you. On average, it takes somebody with a high enough level of English 12 weeks or three months to be fully prepared for the IELTS exam. You're going to ask yourself, how often are you going to practice? How often are you going to set aside time to prepare? Is it going to be daily? Is it going to be weekly? And you have to be realistic about this and balance it with everything else that's taking place in your life. Not just your work or your school, but your family life, your time with friends, your physical and mental health is something that can't suffer just because you're preparing for IELTS. So keep a realistic schedule of how often you can practice and keep your life in balance when it comes to the IELTS exam. There would be no benefit to being successful on the IELTS exam, but being a total wreck mentally and physically by the time you're done. So keep it in balance. And how much time? If you're going to spend time on a daily basis, you can be fully prepared with 30 minutes to an hour a day quite easily. Or maybe you're going to have to spend 30 minutes a day, Monday to Friday, and three or four hours on the weekend. But again, be realistic and set your expectations accordingly and be well aware of the time, how long, how often, and how much the preparation is going to be required. And then as you're preparing, whenever it's time to prepare and practice, get focused in. Focus so that you have no distractions. Choose the best place for your practice time that's free from the distractions. And sometimes the distractions can be good things like children and family members, but maybe you're just going to have to explain to them and help them to understand your goal and the requirements of your preparation 
so that they'll support you in this and find the best place free from distractions that you can practice and the best time. What's the best time where you feel most energized and accomplish the most, even in the shortest amount of time? So make sure that when it does come time to prepare, you're focused and dialed in to the task ahead of you. And then prioritize. And the three prioritize, priorities that I uh, think are so important part of your preparation is first of all, discover your weaknesses. Do a practice test right at the full practice test right at the beginning. You may not do another one for a few weeks, but with this full practice test, discover your weaknesses and analyze them. If you discover that most of the mistakes that you're making in the ALTS exam uh, are English mistakes, then maybe it's time to pause your IELTS preparation and again, go back and improve your English and focus on that and prioritize that. Once you've discovered that there are mostly IELTS mistakes, then prioritize the question types that you need to work on and become proficient uh, in these specific question types, working on your weaknesses and improving your weaknesses will help you improve overall in the fastest way possible. So discover your weaknesses and then prioritize improving those weaknesses. And then you will overcome these weaknesses. And once you've overcome all these weaknesses, you're ready to think about booking your test as you discover that you're being successful and getting the score you need in your practice and then maybe take a second full practice test and then if you find that you still aren't getting the score you need just repeat the process discover your weaknesses improve your weaknesses and overcome your weaknesses and all this is possible as you prepare for the ielts exam so I would encourage you, if you haven't yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I provided everything I possibly can to help you in your preparation so that you can do it independently. And when you do have questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments, and I'll be sure to respond. If you have any, uh, if you want to reach out to me through email, you'll find my email uh, address in the comments and one other thing that i really want to provide for you if, if you're just starting out is my ielts preparation checklist it's free and all you have to do is click on the link in the comments and you can have this ielts preparation uh, checklist in your inbox within a matter of minutes and this will really help you get started to know everything you need to know about prep uh, preparing and being ready for the ielts exam